hello let me show you two rendered images this is one of them you might think Arnold did a bad rendering because of the, all of the graininess but in fact these are flakes which pretend to create a sort of metallic pearlesque look like a brushed metal sort of uh, look uh, with another background here you see basically the same Im image this is the 100% resolution and uh, you see the flakes working here so they pre pretend that there's a there's a something below the metallic surface which does that interesting effect so this is be being used in uh, all kinds of industrial design processes and uh, i show you the way how to get to the flakes basically okay so in maya we have a new scene and we introduce a sphere and we scale that sphere up just a little bit and deform it slightly we are under modeling so we have the deformation here and for example you choose any of them I just choose the first one here in the nonlinear ones uh, it doesn't do anything until I click here on bend and change the curvature curvature to some kind of value here and I can do it slightly asymmetrical like this so uh, this is a deformation I have now let me pick a few faces here um, right mouse click tuck 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 and on the other side one as well like here and maybe here and now I go to the extrusion icon here I think it's control E and be careful selecting your arrow now that's the blue arrow is the best one in this case so we can extrude them like this right mouse click object mode now we want to make the object a little bit smoother mesh smooth and here we have the divisions and this is a very critical um, parameter if you type in 100 here Maya will probably crash so we uh, just leave it uh, at 3 maybe yeah well, that looks quite good right mouse click new material and we create an Arnold surface shader which is basically white and has that shiny look quite nice I think we don't need the grid anymore so it has that shininess of course it doesn't look like anything when you render it because we don't have a light in the scene so let's introduce a light in the scene and the first light is an area light which sits in the middle of the scene so let's press W in order to move it away from that object it points in that direction and we scale it up massively like this and rotate it just a little bit and just a little bit in this axis it is a very dim I know from previous experience the normalize unchecking creates that nice look now so this is uh, uh, the influence of our uh, area light will later introduce a sky dome light as well which just uh, has a very slight effect on the whole scene all the way back here is the standard surface shader another way to get to it faster would be right mouse click and then material attributes that brings us to the same thing so let's give the base color since we're here already uh, a ramp and uh, it shouldn't go from black to white let's create something going from blue to green like this looks quite nice really and when we render it of course we see basically the same thing now um, with this tab we can go back to the basic shader attributes here and we have a specularity weight of one and above that is a metalness of zero and we can raise this and now you have harsh reflections because it's now a metal object and uh, just leave it wherever you like to have it uh, we're going to deal with the more complex flake structure now anyway 
So let's open the Hypershade window now. It's right here next to the render settings. Render settings here, Hypershade here. So when we open it, we have a gray part here where we can deal with our objects now, with our nodes actually. In this um, part of the window, you can navigate as usual. And actually, I move this a little bit to the side so you can see it all right. Um, this is our shader here. And when we click on one of these icons here, I like the middle one, we get the whole structure here. Uh, we have that ramp which goes into the base color. We have a placement for the ramp, so it tells us from the bottom to the top, for example. We don't need to see this actually because now we'll create uh, a flakes texture. It goes like this. You press the key tab on your keyboard. It opens this field here and you type in AI flakes. It's enough to type in AIF. You have the flakes here and you click on the flake and you have the flake node here. Now the trick is to feed the out color of the flake node into two parts here. One is visible here. It's the normal camera. So let's just make a connection to the normal camera. The other one is the coat normal. And here you see coat, coat color, coat roughness, but not coat normal. But we find it, because it has to be there somewhere, uh, by going fr from this out here to the top entry here. When we let loose of the mouse, it gives us the option to choose other and that's what we're doing now and you have an input selection for our AI standard surface now with all of the possible connections and further down is the code normal this is what you need to choose just click here once and you're done you have two connections now one to the code normal and one to the normal camera which is basically the bump map so um, the object has changed a little bit here and our rendering has changed a little bit I think too like this it's very flaky and it's very metally the flakes respect like all textures the size of the uh, of the scene and since we have um, a scene which is rather small the flakes are rather big and here they are in the attribute editor if you don't find them go back to your a hyper shader and just click on them then you have them here or when you minimize that window you have them here as well so we need to reduce the scale now it's set to 0 0.1 let's set it to 0 0.01 this makes the flakes much smaller and even smaller 0 0.001 and now you have that metal sort of look which we're, we're looking for. Arnold takes some time to render this. The final step is we introduce that Arnold sky dome light. It wraps around the whole scene. When we render it, everything is too bright. But still you can see the flakes. So we reduce that intensity to 0 0.2 for example. And we map the color, and that's crucial for all reflective material, with some kind of file. An HDR file would be ideal. So I go to File, and right here I can choose an image. So go to any kind of website where you can download an HDR surround image. One of the surround image I have is the it's 400 meg uh, megabyte big here is the Kaylee interior 16k which I don't need for, for the, this experiment here's a smaller version of this so it's a uh, 360 degree image of a uh, room with a nice window and when we open this we have already the nice reflections here and in a car paint environment you always need interesting surroundings which do reflect on the coating material of the chassis of the car 
where you see golden parts now here popping up and they wouldn't pop up here if we hadn't used the flakes. Of course we can make the flakes even smaller and play with the flake uh, parameters. There are not very many to play with. Let's go back to them. Here are the flakes. Let's close the hypershade window now. Flakes are here and I can for example raise the normals so they get a little bit more pokey. I can reduce the scale even further to this value here so they're very small now. I can lower the density so I have less grains under the coat. I can change the steps and the depth and the index of a refraction. So there's a lot of things we can do and I leave you here so you have to go on from here. You have the basic method to do this now and uh, I wish you a very very good and creative day. Bye bye.